We learned today via the Herald Sun about what is happening in Victoria, that a state land tax is set to add $250 million to people's power bills, as well as business power bills. Let me read this. It's all to do with land tax. But land tax has soared $56 million in just 12 months because it's based on the valuations that were done in last year's property boom, exacerbated in regional areas due to an influx of people getting out of COVID central during the pandemic. Industry and consumer groups have slammed what they call a sneaky and deceptive tax, which was set up in 2004 to cover a subsidy for aluminium smelters that's now used to fill government coffers. They also fear that the costs could soar even higher once new voltage lines are strung across Western Victoria to connect renewable energy homes and businesses. Now, remember, that's the series of power lines that will go across places like Ballarat, over the farms that grow the potatoes for everything from McDonald's to McCain's. And the Victorian government has said that all of those farmers, all of those residents, the ones who were protesting in the streets of Ballarat in the lead up to the Victorian election will not even have a right of appeal over the decision to slam those things onto their property. Because when the state decides it's what you're getting, it's what you're getting. I just hope that you maintain the rage and you tell pollsters and you tell the people who knock on your front door, thanks for changing my world, I'm the one that's had to pay for it. Another example of that, and again, I might be a petrol head, I might go to things like Newcastle, which was a great event. I don't hate electric vehicles, all right? I get it. For some people, better mousetrap, particularly if you live in and around the cities. But there was a little story that I was surprised even made it through the editorial decision-making of the taxpayer-funded news websites this weekend, where they pulled together a whole bunch of vision from around the world of electric cars exploding. The battery's exploding, going on fire, and it is so dangerous because of the chemicals that are involved in this that firefighters will have to wait to a certain point in time to actually go and engage to try and turn to try and put those fires out. Now, does this mean that every electric vehicle is about to go on fire? No. But is there a good chance that statistically, if we double, then double, then double, then double, then double, then double, then double, until you get 100% that's going to be electric vehicles, there will be an increase in the number of cars that are exploding while charging? You betcha. And believe it or not, even firefighters' unions are saying today this is going to be a problem. Particularly in Queensland, they're worried that they have to deal with almost one residential fire a week because of the lithium-ion batteries that are connected to a number is going to increase significantly over the next few years, but already they're dealing with one fire a week. And think about how few electric cars there are right now. Think of how few batteries there are connected to solar. And yes, it will be the vast minority, but when the vast minority might be your unit block, you may notice 